Hey everyone, today we're going to be looking at something called Rx Swift, and we're going to be building this really simple login validation where the email and password fields have to be uh, three or more letters before the login button becomes enabled, like so. And you can see there that is enabled and not enabled when the validation fails. Um, so Rx Swift, if you haven't heard of it, I'd just recommend coming to this GitHub repo and reading through the documentation, but we'll be covering some of the basic concepts during this tutorial. So let's get going. Um, this is just a, a standard single view application. So what we need to do is add a couple of libraries, one Rx Swift itself, and the second one is called Rx Coco, which will allow us to bind our view model to um, the input fields here and the button. So let's go ahead and create a pod file in our directory. So we're going to type pod init. And we can see that the pod file has been created. Then open up that pod file. I've got a shortcut that um, opens it up in Atom here, but you can use any text editor. And we want to type pod rx swift and pod rx coco. Save that. And then we need to type pod install and I just like to add the verbose flag to see what's going on. And once that's done, we need to close Xcode and we need to reopen um, the project uh, through the workspace file so that the pods are included. And you can see that we now have the pods here and we can utilize them in our project. So the first thing we're going to do is build the UI. So open up your main storyboard and it's just going to be two text fields and one button and one label. So let's do that. Let's drag two text fields onto the controller. And a button. And a label. And we're going to make these the same distance from the sides. So come down here, select the Add New Constraints button, don't constrain it to the margins, and we're going to make these 40 from each side. Add those eight constraints. So we want this top text field to be about a third from the top here. So to do that, we hold down Control after selecting the text field, hold down Control drag it to the bottom here and select vertical spacing to bottom layout guide highlight this constraint and come up here uh, to the attributes inspector and make this constant zero actually we need to reverse these two so reverse first and second item constant zero and the multiplier is going to be one colon three and do command option equals to update the constraint you can see that it's been placed roughly a third into the view. And we just need to set these other constraints now. So select the second text view, come down here to adding a new constraint. And we want the space above and the space below to be roughly 10 each. Add those. And you can do command option equals again to update the constraints. This button, we want it to say login to change the text. 
and we're going to change the text to white and the background color to a gray and you can do, again do command option equals and the label is going to say not enabled and let's set this 10 from the login button and update those constraints let's center this text and just to make it look a bit nicer we're going to set the height of all of these let's set that to say 40 and you can change the text font and things like that um, but I think that's fine for now let's just add some placeholders quickly so this is going to be email and this is going to be password okay let's just give that a run and see if it's working and there you go works fine we can actually make this uh, red for not enabled and the next thing we need to do is hook these text fields and login button and label up to our view controller so come here to the assistant editor and we want to control, hold down control and drag over and we're going to create these outlets and this is going to be called email text field and do that for each of them so this is going to be password text field it's going to be the login button and finally um, let's call this login enabled label so we've got our four outlets here um, and we're going to be using an MVVM structure so what we want to do for this is add a login view model. So create a new Swift file. So the first thing here is to import Rx Swift. This is going to be a struct and we need two variables here. One is the email text. And this will represent the text in the email input. And this is going to be an Rx variable of type string with a default value of empty string. And we're going to have the password text as well. Again, set this up as an Rx variable empty string and then we just need a computer property called is valid and this is going to be an observable of type bool and we want this to return something called observable dot combine latest and what we want to pass into this combine latest is uh, something that will tell us when the email text and password text has changed um, and if either of these change we need to recalculate this it is valid logic so in order to do that we can say email text dot as observable and password text dot as observable and this basically says whichever one of these changes we want to know and let's say that's email and password in and here comes our logic so we can say email dot characters dot count is more than or equal to three and password dot characters dot count is more than or equal to three two then this will return true and is valid 
uh, will be true. So you can put whatever logic you want in here, um, but ultimately we need to bind this result to our UI to say uh, enable the login if this is true. So let's go and do that. Come to our view controller and we're going to be using Rx Swift here, so import it. And we're also going to be using what we included in our pod earlier, our pod file earlier, called Rx Coco. So save that. And what we want to do in our view did load is bind the text fields to our view model. So the first thing we need to do is create an instance of our login view model. Let's do that. And we want to say the email text field. And we're going to use some of the magic of the library here. Say so dot rx dot text. And this is going to return something called a control property, but it's going to be of type optional string. So we want to um, make sure this isn't optional so we can use it. So what we're going to do is say dot map. And we're going to use this dollar zero, which represents the, the first variable. And if this is nil, we're basically going to return an empty string here. And we need to pass that through. And we're going to use another bit of the library called bind to. And just in here, we're going to pass in our login view model email text. So what this will do is it will tell our view model that the input of this uh, text field has changed. Let's see what's happening here. Okay, it's saying it's unused, so we can just add underscore equals here. And that should remove the warning. And this just means we're not going to use the result. So do this for your password field as well. Map that. and bind it to our view model password text we can also bind the um, the is valid result to our login button so that if it's not valid we can make sure that the login button is not enabled and we can do this through using the, um, the library again so let's do that let's say view model login view model dot is valid dot bind to login button and I think that's it. Yeah, so you have to um, again append this dot rx and say it is enabled. And what this will do is bind this boolean observable to your is enabled property. And we'll have the same thing here. And we can also update this um, login enabled label. Um, so let's do that. Let's do this in a slightly different way just to show you how you would perhaps go about this without the bindings um, provided by Rx Coco. So we want to listen to this is valid property on our login view model. And we do this by saying um, subscribe. So we're subscribing to the observable which is going to emit events 
and we can do something shorthand here. So we can say on next. And basically this will um, pick up anything that is emitted from the is valid observable. So in this block, we just want to react to what the is valid is telling us. So you can write login enable label dot text is equal to whether is valid is true or false. So if it's true, we want this to say enabled. And if it's false, we want this to say not enabled. Um, let's see what this is complaining about. Probably about using self. Yep. So we need to declare this as weak so that we don't get a retain cycle here. And we know that this will never be. Uh, nil, so we can write unowned rather than weak. And what's this complaining about? Again, now you could use a dispose bag. Um, I think it's probably a, a bit too much to get into right now, but you would use this in the following way and this basically just cleans up after you so you can say add disposable to dispose bag and this is a very important component of rx swift i encourage you to read up more on it on, it, on precisely what it does so let's add the color in too so that when login is enabled we're showing a green enabled label um, and if it isn't I'm going to say it's red and let's add a little bit of login here just to show that this is receiving events from our view model and let's run this So uh, we have our console down here. Um, let's bring this over. And you can already see that it's fired twice here. So let's start typing. You see as valid as false. Still false. And it's firing and checking this is valid every time we type. But once we have three letters in each, um, the button becomes enabled and the text also becomes enabled. So that's RX Swift. Really quick intro. I haven't been using it too long, um, but it seems like it could really um, head in this direction. Um, so definitely have a look into it and see what you think.